tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we learn about the Pacific jungle fowl, which you might call a chicken, or in the case of a male, a rooster. You can follow along with me as I show you how to draw a rooster. And I'll even show you some tips on how to paint those iridescent feathers. What's their Hawaiian name? What do they eat? How come there's so many of them? Why do they cross the road? We'll learn the answers to most of those questions and learn some rooster anatomy along the way in this colorfully cackling episode of Painting in Paradise. <laughs> the Pacific jungle fowl were brought to Hawaii aboard early voyaging canoes. They were one of the animals that were very important to the early Hawaiians. The Hawaiian name for the jungle fowl that we commonly call chickens and roosters is moa. Moa. Moa? 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 Moa. Moa. Moa, moa, moa. Moa, moa, moa. Moa, moa, moa. Moa, moa, moa. If you want to get specific, you can call a hen, moa wahine, and the rooster, moa kane. I love them for their great personalities, entertaining antics, and of course, their spectacular colors. Like many other animals, the males, or roosters, are very flamboyant. That means they're colorfully noticeable and proud of it. You'll often see chickens scratching the ground in search of food for themselves and their chicks. They eat everything from seeds to centipedes, so you can see why ranchers like having them around. Because they eat almost anything, the moa are great survivors. If you've ever been to Kauai, you'll notice that there are more moa there than any other island in Hawaii. That's because there's no mongoose on Kauai. The mongoose is the major predator for the moa, as well as other ground nesting birds. Mongoose are plentiful on all islands except for Kauai, and that's why the moa here are so abundant. Well, I hope you got the answers to most of your moa questions. Now get your paper and pencil ready, because when we return, I'll show you how to draw a rooster. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to draw a Pacific jungle fowl, and we're going to be doing a boy one called a rooster. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to put the rooster right around there. I'm going to be pressing softly. You can use a pencil for this. I'll be using a pen so you can see it a little better. But remember to press softly. Why are you going to press softly? Because in case you got to erase, you don't want to be digging in there with a pencil, okay? So we're going to just be nice and loose. You can stretch out. Oh, yeah. Okay, now that we're relaxed, we're going to put an oval right around there, just like an egg, right in the middle of the page, okay? And that's where the body's going to go. I'll put another oval right here where the neck and the head are gonna go. Okay, and notice how soft and loose I do it, yeah? Softly. And then I'm gonna put a circle right up top here where the head or the face is gonna go. Also another oval right around there where those back feathers or tail feathers are gonna go. And another little egg-shaped oval right there. That's where the thigh is, you know the chicken, I mean the rooster thigh, yeah. Okay, so we start to see our rooster forming up here. I'll give him a beak right around there. Give him a little smile, yeah. And right up there is gonna be that comey looking thing and we'll call it a 
comb. That's right. Okay, so the rooster's comb will go up there. Come right around there. Right down here he has his blah blah blah. They're called cackles. Yeah. So this little cackle thing over here, and you can put it right around the maca or the eye. And might as well just go ahead and put that maca right around there. Okay, we start to see our rooster forming up. I'll make his feet over there with his three toes about there and a little spiky one called a spur. Okay. Now up here in the roosters, they have what they call sickle feathers, those really sickle-shaped feathers. That's why they call them sickle feathers. So now I'm going to go ahead and draw those sickle feathers. And I'll start right here and I'll come up and take up as much paper as I can. And doo -doo. there's usually maybe one or two of those. And then I'll continue to draw in the main tail feathers. Okay, um, we have his wing right around here. And a couple of, uh, there's like a wing bar and a little patch over there. We'll take a good look at a rooster and you can see all these kind of different sections of of colors and feather shapes. Okay, you usually got a little spriggy white section right there. And we're getting a pretty good little jagga jagga over there. We're getting a pretty good form up of our rooster. Okay. Now we know that a rooster has how many legs? Two. Okay, so far I've drawn one. And I think I'll draw another one. I'll just kind of repeat that shape right there and draw his back leg over there and the spur right there. So I've just kind of formed up my rooster. Okay, I got the head, neck, wing, the thigh, and the chest, the jugga juggas. I don't know what they're called back there. Tail feathers, sickle tail feathers, and comb. Now you can get a pen, or I'll get a bigger pen, a Sharpie pen, just so you can see it a little better. And I'll start to go over the outlines of this rooster once again. Using this as a guide, I don't have to follow it exactly, but I can take the beak, give him a little bit of a smile, his big maca, the cackle that goes around the maca, and his, I think it's called a waddle, I'm sorry. It's called a waddle. And his comb. I don't know how many spikes there are in that thing, but maybe you can help me count. Draw the neck down to the body, a little tuft of white feathers, beautiful chest area. Okay, coming down to his toes, spur. A little bit of a back foot. The jaga jagas, the wing. And he has kind of this, it's kind of this wing bar of feathers. And some of these beautiful feathers here. Right by that neck, they got these long skinny feathers that are quite impressive. We can go ahead and do the tail feathers. A little jagga jagga by the tail. And that beautiful sickle shaped sickle tail feather. Maybe put two of them one behind there. Okay, you can also determine where the shadow's gonna be if the sun's hitting that chicken up top. You can just draw some grass and kind of make a shadow of grass around there. You can put a few sprigs or lines And 
we're ready for our shading. In shading the rooster, you can find a source of light. And especially those parts that are in shadow are gonna get shaded, like this back leg right there. Once you shade that back leg, it immediately looks farther away. You know, some nice places for shadows might be these black feathers down here. Under the chest area, maybe under the wing a little bit. Yeah, a little bit under this comb. A little bit behind the wattles. And this turf, you can make kind of the directions. The directions of the tail feathers. Feather back there can get nice and shaded. Okay, but as you know, these roosters are so colorful, and when it comes time to paint them, you're just gonna have a party on this baby. Hope you enjoyed learning how to draw a rooster because when we return we'll have some rooster painting fun and I'll even show you how I get those feathers to look so shiny. And what better place to have a rooster painting class than in Hanalei on the island of Kauai. First we started off by drawing our roosters. Then we use the marker to outline them. Then we start adding all those beautiful colors. Okay, go easy now.
here, you can blend your colors like this. Jaga, jaga. Okay, slow down you guys, now just take your time. Okay, good, now don't think, just paint. Okay, hurry up, now that's almost finished. Now let's make those feathers shine. The beauty of the rooster is in its shiny colors. A lot of people ask me how to get those colors to look so shiny. And the way I do it is I usually put down a dark color first. And while that paint is wet, I'll start to add in other colors like purples and blues and greens and make it look really iridescent and shiny. So when I want to make the feathers shiny, I'll usually start by painting them dark. I'll put a wet layer of dark paint and I'll start to lighten them up in the order of purple, then blue, then like a turquoise green. So here I am, I'm starting to add a little purple to these feathers, into the black. Okay, and we call this an iridescent effect. It's from all the oil in the bird's feathers that reflect the colors all around it. And it's really gorgeous. And I usually start off with my purples first, then I'll go to a blue, maybe a blue and white or a light blue. So as my rooster's feathers are getting brighter, they're changing from a deep purple color to a lighter blue color. So there's my purple. I'm starting to add some blue where I want it to get brighter. Okay, so you see it changing here from purple to blue. That happens pretty rapidly sometimes. And in the places where the feathers are the shiniest, they're gonna turn a beautiful aqua green like this. You'll see those shiny greens on some of these rooster tail feathers. These long tail feathers, again, they're called the sickle feathers. They kind of grow out, they fall out, they get bit out, and uh, the rooster regrows them. So here I am with my light aqua green color at the shiniest parts. And you see how the feathers fade from a purple to a blue to a green in color. There you go. So enjoying playing with these colors in those dark feathers produces a really nice effect. And that's how I get my rooster's feathers to look so shiny. And now let's meet an artist from Kauai named Fanny Bilidu, who loves to paint roosters and chickens. So a lot of your work has uh, some fun in it. A lot of them have chickens and roosters in it. When you started painting chickens, what happened? There was a painting that just didn't do anything for me at all. So I thought, I'm just going to paint a couple of chickens in an inner tube. It kind of made me laugh. and. It made other people laugh too. They enjoyed it and, and so I felt free to be able to do more. All right, so more of these chicken paintings started coming to life and what was the reaction? People say like in the galleries, when people are walking around the gallery, you can hear them laughing and they know right away they're looking at the chickens uh -huh. because they, they can relate to them. They're right. kind of humanistic and yes. they're doing so I noticed things. that about your paintings. Uh, the, the roosters are having a good time, the painters are having a good time, the public's having a good time. I think it's a win-win-win-win situation all around. When people visit Hawaii, they're sometimes a little bummed because they get waken up by roosters and chickens in the morning. Um, do you hear the roosters in the morning? Do they wake you up? Uh, you know, you tune them out after a while. But you know, if you turn on the bathroom light at night, they think the sun's rising and then there's like this <laughs> wave that comes across Hawaii and uh, everybody gets woke up, yeah. just the way it is. Well, if you're a visitor and you're getting bothered by the sounds of the roosters and chickens, don't worry, it'll go away in about two 20 weeks. 20 years. <laughs> <laughs>
you can see the art of Fanny Bilidou throughout artist galleries on Kauai. You can also see a heck load of chickens and roosters there as well. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I'd love to see your artwork, so email it to patrick at paintinginparadise.tv and I'll see if I can get it on the air. Aloha.